This is the Elder Law Report. I'm attorney Greg McIntyre, along with... Do you pause for dramatic effect or do I say my name? Well, I can say your name or you can say your name. I'll say my name. Okay. My name is Brendan Begley. So, Brendan's our, my law partner here at McIntyre Elder Law, and I wanted to talk today about entitlement. Love working with Brenton. The reason we are partners is because we have a strong work ethic. You are not an entitled person, and neither am I, okay? I cannot stand an entitled attitude. I feel like so many people today feel like the, you know, thinks the world owes them something, right? The world owes them something just because of who they are or the amazing person that they were born to be. And I'm sure there are special people, but they turn me off. I mean, you know, I don't want to work with them. You know, I don't really like to be around them. And this is a lot of people, you know. Um, I just feel like a lot, most people do not just embrace a work ethic, kind of the American spirit, the American dream. They're not going for that. And they don't understand what it is or that it's available to them. And they spend so much time whining about what they don't have, probably because they have so much. Right. And have been given so much by doing so little. They spend so much time and wasted energy whining about what they don't have instead of going out and suffering and working to get what they want. Right. Yeah. So I have six children, okay? And we both have a lot of clients with children and grandchildren. And what we want to do ourselves, I know, is work and build a legacy and have more for ourselves than our parents have, right? To be able to give our children more. Right. But like anything else, that's a double-edged sword. It is. And it what's is. the double-edged sword of that? You know, I, I, I've thought about this. I've talked to other people about this. How do you raise children that have, have more than you have, right? That have mm -hmm. more than you have, but not spoil them. In the I, same work ethic. Yeah, right? exactly. Because I grew up dirt poor. I grew up working really hard. I grew up having to you know, help my parents build houses and uh, so that we could fix them up, sell them, that sort of thing. Because that's really what we did. We did a lot of remodeling, a lot of building. And, and I grew up just getting my hands dirty and being expected to work. And it was a hard life. It wasn't an easy life. But it gave me a lot of things, a lot of tools to um, help me the rest of my life. It, it, it gave me a strong work ethic and it gave me perspective and it made me very grateful of everything that I've been able to get. And the thing is, is that I want to do that for my children too, but I also want to be successful and leave them something behind so they had more than what I had growing up. I don't want to be dirt poor. I don't want them to have to work, but I do want them to want to work. Mm -hmm. And so the question really is, is how do you do that? How do you control that? Um, if I do want to leave them something, if I want to leave my children or grandchildren something, how do I, how do I still control whether or not they're going to be able to, you know, get everything all at once and just be spoiled by, uh, by, uh, by the inheritance or can I limit that somehow? Can I control that somehow? Can I have a hand outside the grave somehow and make sure that my loved ones still benefit from what I worked hard for, but they're not spoiled by it. That work ethic is the most important thing I think you can have. It's the difference, even if you have immense talent, like Warren Buffett, Bill right. Gates, Dan Pena, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Right. Those guys, exceptional work talent, but exceptional work ethic. Yeah. It's the difference between being good and being the greatest, okay? Uh, a Tom Brady. Right? I mean, they all have extreme discipline and work ethics. That's what you want to give to your kids. Right. That's what you want to give to your grandkids. Right. That'll carry them further than their talent will. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so, you ask how you do that, okay? I mean, we're not the only ones talking about this. Some of those people I mentioned, the richest people on planet Earth, are not leaving their money to their kids. Yeah. Warren Buffett. Bill Gates, they know. Dan Pena is the same way, right? Helped start CNN and other, other ventures. Not leaving money to the kids. He says, two of my kids are fine with it, and one of them's not, but that's okay. <laughs> so, you know, he's making them work. 
It'll yeah. be their own people, right? Um, and that's important. But, you know, Buffett and Gates have a huge trust set up or foundation set up, okay, something similar. Right. Um, and, and, and everybody out there can do that as well, right? Um, we draft those things all the time, right? right? Those, you know, Brenton, if I come in, I've worked my whole life, my, my, me, my wife, we've worked our whole life, and we want to set our grandkids up where they profit and benefit from our hard work and, and some of the monies that we've been able to save, real estate, things like that. Um, but we don't want to spoil them. Right. We want to make them work for it. Get education, get life experience before they get a bunch of money too young and blow it and hurt themselves. How do we do that? Well, what would you advise? A great way to do it is to utilize a trust because the trust is a great tool that can really live beyond you for a long time. So if I was gonna do something like that, I would want my assets to be in trust so that if I passed away and I did leave something for my grandchildren, say they're you know minors right now, um, I wanna make sure that they don't get it until they reach a certain age. And even then, I might want them to reach certain milestones before they get it. Maybe I want you to go to college and earn a certain degree, right? Maybe I want you to have a career in a trade. Maybe I want you to make sure that you've worked a couple of years and get, you've shown a track record and take care of yourself before my trustee distributes your portion out to you, right? Who, so, who, can, who can be my trustee of that trust when I'm dead? Well, your spouse obviously could be your okay. trustee. Okay, what um, if we're both dead? Well, if, if you're really anybody. Mm -hmm. Right, and so a good if you want a child, child what am I trusted? absolutely a trusted child. If you want to leave it for a long time, you might think about getting a professional trustee. Hey, I don't, I don't really have anybody to, to handle that job, or you know, I don't really want to leave that job to my children. Could I ask your law firm to do it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people do that because they say, okay, well, you know, I, I want to, um, I want to make sure that it's an independent third party mm -hmm. that has, you know, the. The, has to follow the terms in the trust. And sure. It's bound by following the terms in the trust, but they're not someone that you know someone can appeal to and, and pull the heartstrings to get what they want. Right. I mean, you know, among siblings, right? That's right. No, you don't want to call a decision among family members. That's okay. Right. Okay. And plus, I mean, you know, we are used to that job, right? Yeah. As trustees, so Absolutely. so it's a natural thing for us to do. Yeah. The service that we offer. Yeah, and, and, and it's really know, not very expensive to do that. No. no, and it's helpful to have someone like that going along. Because laws might change, you might need advice going forward with respect mm -hmm. to the trust, what you can and can't do, that sort of thing. So it's helpful to have a uh, professional there. And, you know, quick thing about trust is not only do I like trust for the sake that you can help leave something to your family without, you know, spoiling the children, but also, you know, they're great tools too, right? So they're great tools to make sure that the assets actually get to the children Look at this probate or thing. grandchildren. The things that I leave in trust or that are in trust when I die. Yeah. Or the trust is a beneficiary of. Right. Do those go through that probate process down at the courthouse that can take six months a year? No, they don't. They avoid probate, which helps preserve the assets and it helps, I mean, talk about bickering among, among family members. Right. I mean, probate's a real opportunity to do that. Sure. It is. It is the everybody's on edge. Yeah, I mean it, it's a core process. Probate and real estate closings. In yeah, my experience. They're yeah, right. Similar. Or divorce. <laughs> or divorce. Yeah, all contentious. That's right. Yes. And yeah. so it, it does avoid probate, which allows you to avoid um, an opportunity for those assets to get gone, and um, really just go through a smooth process where you get to set the rules for how those assets are distributed. Sure. On your debt for years and years and years. My law professor used to call it dead hand control. That's right. And it's a picture of remote control sticking up in a hand from the grave. That's and right. you can control your money and property well into the future. How far into the future? I mean, three hundred years. Yeah. Okay. Generation. Ask so, the kidneys. Yes. No longer are we subject to the rule against perpetuities, which would limit the time that you control. Right. Lives and being plus twenty-one, 21 years. years. Yeah. Whatever that means. <laughs> The funky rule that no longer applies in North Carolina. Yeah. So trusts are great tools. Hey, if 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 you want to know more about using trust to help you avoid creating entitlements and entitled people in your family, 
we would love to help. We'd love to see your loved ones get their college educations, grandkids, maybe uh, only start enjoying parts of the trust a little at a time or so, so much at a time over say a 10 year period after the trust has helped fund college education, maybe at 25 and distributing out for the next 10 years. It's a good way to do it. Um, it's like the old saying goes, pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm gonna have to think about that one. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you for leaving me with that today. And uh, um, don't be greedy. That's the thing. Is don't be greedy. Hey, I'll list all our Green contact information it. in uh, in the link. Okay. And or or we'd offer a free consult to talk about setting up an estate plan, answer any questions you have about trust. Um, for your them. family or pigs. <laughs> and uh, uh, just go to mcelderlaw.com and schedule that free consult today. Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in to the Elder Law Report. We'll be back next week with some more great information. Thank you.